Dungeons and Dragons. And junk drawer. Oh, hello. Hi. We're oh, back. hello. We are here. I'm in a new place. <laughs> That's true. You are in a new place. Yeah. It's gray Hooray. now. It's instead <laughs> of white. What is up, guys? We are back with another episode of Dungeons and Dragons and Junk Drawer. I got it. I figured it out. That was the last one. It's in big letters in front of my face. We are going to start our shout outs tonight with the man himself, Mike Spillane. Hey, I wasn't expecting to be first, but that's cool. Um, follow us on Instagram at the Junk Drawer Show. I just put up a new story. We have some really cool new things that are going to get posted on there, including new art not made by Carlos. So be on the lookout for that. Um, no spoilers, but it's fucking dope. Um, and uh, aside from that, um, uh, if you're having a rough week like I've been, just know that uh, you're loved. That's awesome. And uh, vote. Up next. We have Dice Daddy himself, Justin Velez. Oh, hello. Uh, I have a few things I would like to shout out. One, importantly, is of course Roll Twenty, which without Roll Twenty, none of this would be possible. We can't, we can't play on Discord. I don't know how to do that. I'm fucking dumb. Uh, <laughs> also, if uh, they're doing a awesome promotion, if you uh, upgrade to their pro uh, level of subscription service, which your boy needs to, but you know, money. Uh, you get uh, a few free maps by the one and only, the incomparable, love of my life, even though he doesn't know I exist. And we talked on Twitter like one, spoke on Twitter like once, David Hemingway. Very high detailed guys. Uh, quite honestly, if you go into the, uh, the market, all their stuff is gonna be uh, awesome and I guarantee you'll find what you're looking for. Uh, also would just like to shout out Mythic Portal Games, Printable Heroes, Cat's Lounge, uh, Zer Gestia Artist Shop, and Kezia Suarez Art from uh, our last stream when we got together. And um, just shout out to uh, Amazon, because with Amazon, I can buy a four pack of one gallon jugs of Tapatio for 25 bucks, and I have a prime to me. It's a lot. Hear me out, guys. 40 kids. The desert. <laughs> okay, back to you. <laughs> Up next, we have Josh Delgado. Hello. Uh, something about four pounds of Tapatio just grosses me the fuck out. Gallons. Oh, four Watch gallons. Your tongue. That's gallons. even worse. That's like 32. More than pounds. Um, also, Pat, were you were you looking at what I was writing in the chat? I was not. Oh, that's perfect, because first is the worst. Sorry, Mike. Second is the best. Sorry, Justin. And third, Harry Chess. And uh, I really like how that worked out. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, so I'm going to start off with the one I do every single time. And uh, I know he's not watching, but... Uh, he needs to start. So on three, let's all do it. So he feels really bad about himself. Three. Fuck you, Donovan. Fuck you, Donovan. 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 You <laughs> you fuck you, guys. Josh. I scared you guys. I tricked you. Oh, Halloween spoopy season, you fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I and then uh, my second shout out is two surprises. And back to you, Pat. My shout out is cut off. Si <laughs> I'm concerned. Last, but certainly not least, the one, the only, Carlos Correa. That's me. That is uh, you. That is me. But first of all, I'm just going to say, go vote. Whether it's by mail, or by mail, or in person, or by mail. Vote. I did mine today. Anyways, uh, my actual shout out um, uh, is one of the artists that I actually, I don't know her, but she is someone that I follow on Instagram. Um, it's a 2 Alial R, so it's the letters A, the number two, the letters A L I E L A R T. Um, she does some great, fantastic D and D art. She's done like all of the Mighty Nine from Critical Role as like Star Wars, either Sith or Jedi characters, um, which are super dope. This is like one of like the maybe if it comes out like as a what's gonna call it Caduceus. 
as a Sith. So like it looks super cool. Um, but you can check out all her art there. Like uh, I'm not sure if her commissions are open or not. I have to check her out. Uh, but yeah, check her out just because I want to again keep spreading love for the arts, especially since they promote positivity and um, uncertain times. Back to you, Pat. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to start my shout outs as I always do, uh, thanking my lovely, beautiful wife for letting me play Imagination with you guys every week. And I also want to shout out my family. My mom showed up on Friday with my dad and surprised me and dropped off a whole bunch of uh, childhood memories. And that was really great. And I also finally got the Christmas gift. My sister, uh, who might be watching this now or in the future, uh, got me last year. So I finally got my Caleb... And Ford chibi pins. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like a pickle. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. Um, so shout out to my family for doing stuff that I appreciate and stuff. Lots of uh, lots of critical role shout outs tonight. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I like that shirt. I'm, I'm kind of mad that your mom didn't tell me she was in town. <clears throat> she was in town for about 10 minutes. So I would have taken five minutes out of my time to quit. <laughs> It would take you an hour to get here. <coughs> Not with the power of love. <laughs> power of love. Oh, okay. Well, on that note. Dice Daddy, whenever you're ready. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, <laughs> last time we were all together, you all were reeling from the uh, devastation that was left in the ma- wake of Madhutep. Uh all of you assess the uh, the different damage amongst the ship, and at this point, uh, Moonin had come to uh, the three of you as Thok was recovering. Uh, each of you with your kind of different missions for him, but he said he needed to go home and report what was happening. So he has left the party, unfortunately, and the meanwhile, Thok had found himself in the captain's quarters who brought him in front of a group of avatars who are the chosen by the gods to protect this realm. And he was introduced to many people, including the incomparable Queen Anya, who everyone loves. She has to... (laughs) She has to lead a whole entire nation, so shut up. Um, To which they have... The party now has three weeks to get to... uh, Valoria, and they're still quite not sure where they are. So we shall take it from there. And uh, I believe we last left off. Everyone was going to, everyone drank and went to bed. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my brain is a little scratchy. So we'll pick it up in the morning. So, uh, Thok, are you going to begin to get up early in the morning and pray now? I will. It'll take me time to start getting back to being acclimated to getting up at as crack of dawn, but I will, once I get up, start praying and do my best to get up earlier and earlier with mm-hmm. the sunrise. Okay. Uh, and then Dremel, where did you sleep last night? Uh, unless Creed is mad at me for some reason, which I don't think she was, I would have stayed with her. Okay. No, she's not mad at you at this for right now. <laughs> for right now. In see what the fuck I do later. Uh, can't wait. Okay. So, <clears throat> Thok, you eventually get up to the bow of the ship, and your uh, internal clock is a little bit off, but you're able to, just when the um, the suns are starting to crest over the horizon is when you're able to kind of sit there. You get to the bow of the ship, and you lay out your armor, and it's almost like uh, putting on an old, um, comfortable sweater. Like there's a familiarity and there's a comfort to it as you see those suns come up and depending on how you feel, almost a glimmer of hope in your chest that you haven't felt for a, a while since you haven't uh, heard from Pelor in quite a bit. Anything that you're particularly doing while you're praying? No, um, well, yes. Uh, I would, while praying to Pelor first be thankful for the reconnection after so many years with some familiar faces between duke and dirt um and 
ask for guidance for what the next step should be because I'm still trying to wrap my head around Creed saying welcome to the council, not really understanding what, one, the council is, and two, what do you mean welcome? As in, hi, welcome to these guys, or welcome, this is a permanent position now. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's just me kind of blabbing slash trying to put pieces together slash asking for guidance, even though I know he may not be able to. Um, But that's pretty much it. Go ahead and roll a wisdom check. Check, right? Correct. 20, not natural. 20, not natural. Okay. So you kind of feel this poke and prod and the kind of almost like the brain stem as you kind of concentrate, sorry, and open your eyes and you see a very visible Manu just looking out at the horizon, but then looking at you very confused. What? Why are you confused? I, I'm on the boat now. What? Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. And he's just kind of like looking around. Where'd you think you were? No, I was in that that space I kind of go to when I'm not here. That it's it's kind of like nothing, but also everything at the same time. Does that make sense? No and yes at the same time. Yeah, no, I figured you wouldn't get it. I mean, I don't get a lot of things. No. Especially just... this dynamic, but... um, You don't have to keep going over there, by the way. We've kind of talked it out, and... We don't think you're a spy. I've never thought you were, but... Well... Let's um let's hope the rest of your friends feel that way. I think the trust, especially the past twenty four hours, has strengthened. So hopefully with me making this decision, they will trust by my best judgment. And we still have to figure out one, what this is, and two how to use it to our advantage. And you see him and he kind of leans against the side of the uh, the ship and he goes, yeah, don't, I still don't know what this is either. That's fine. Also, um, what are we doing about that? And you see him and he points over and there's just the huge massive hole in the ship just kind of patched up a little bit, but nothing that you could really do on the boat at sea. Oh, um, Creed is going to stop at one of the nearest ports to get that fixed on our way to Valoria. Um, We're going to Valoria. Yeah, that'll uh, we'll be there. Well, hopefully in the next three weeks. Why hopefully are not we going to Valoria? To ensure that Queen Anya does not get assassinated, even though part of me. Let me not think negative thoughts. If I may. She's a pleasant woman. Just just allow me to. Ew, why? What, make sure that she doesn't get assassinated? Or, ew, why protect her? Both. I mean, well, there's many different reasons. One, she's a queen. Two, the guy that's just gonna looks to assassinate her is somebody that we're looking to intercept anyways for Dremel's sake. So there's some personal... Awesome, I'm gonna die in Valoria then. You're already Ooh. dead. Yes, but then you're gonna die and I don't know what happens to me. I mean, I almost died. What happened to you whenever I was getting my sternum replaced? I was next to you, man. Okay, then maybe whenever I die you just stay next to me and I'll just be a ghost that. with you. <laughs> We'll just uh, hunt. We'll just hunt Dremel. I don't want to haunt Dremel. He likes to watch. Maybe he likes ghost sex. 
Not uh, no. Uh, oh uh, wait, no. I realized what uh, I said it uh, after I said it. Sorry, no, I take it back. I take it back. No, this no. Stop finger guns. No, the finger guns doesn't make it better. Okay, uh, uh, I put my hand behind my back. <laughs> and you see me just like oh, God. So, so while they're having their moment, Alder, obviously you're in your meditation, and you would have noticed Thought getting up to greet the the twin sons. And Donner, I'm assuming you're still sleeping very awkwardly on your chair. Yeah. Just kind of like one arm up, snoring, just very gently. Tucked yeah. under his arm is his is his axe. And he's like. Uh, so Alder, what are you doing in the morning? <clears throat> Honestly, uh, first thing I think I want to do this morning is I want to wake up and, uh, especially if I'm greeting the day a little bit earlier than the rest, is uh, go to the kitchen I think and try and prepare some prepare some breakfast. Okay. So you meet some of the different kitchen hands and. Uh, you guys have kind of gotten free passage at the ship within reason. So you do have access to the kitchen. You're able to make meals for yourself. You're not expected to make anyone else meals, but you're, you're in no way, uh, in a position to demand like items be like shipped in that kind of thing. So you're able yeah. to utilize the resources within reason. So, yeah, so yeah. I will get to work on making a, a nice breakfast feast for the group. Um, cause I think everyone kind of needs something nice before we get to town and figure out what's next. Okay. And I'll also will be, uh, you know, try and get stuff ready for, for Brock, uh, Creed and Valdana as well. Um, so that way it just kind of like, kind of showed a, a bit of gratitude and appreciation to the whole group. Okay. Very, very nice. So I will have you roll a... a nature and a performance check. Awesome. Two Na things that... Or you know what? Not nature. Survival and performance. Survival is for the cooking it. Performance is for plating. If it comes out pretty or not. 22 for the cooking. Okay. So it comes out really good. But it might look gray. <laughs> it looks good. What'd you get? Three on the plating. It's definitely slop. Blech. It looks like slop, but it tastes amazing. It's like a really good risotto because it's really tiny. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you so you're have working been on chopped. That. You have been chopped. Uh, cutthroat Kitchen. Anyway, um, <laughs> so Alder, <it's> none. <laughs> Alder, while you're cooking, we will mosey on over to, because I said mosey, Dremel. Dremel, what are you doing, bud, in the captain's quarters? Uh, about what time is it right now? I'd say it's probably early morning, like 6 a.m. 6 a.m., 6.30. Okay. Um, if if Creed is still, is, is she still asleep? She is. She's still sleeping, and when she breathes in and breathes out, it's <clears throat> low humming. Then I will, uh, I'll attempt to get out of bed uh, stealthily. Okay. Go ahead and roll a stealth check, bud. That will be... Ten. Ten. Okay, let me see what her passive is. Okay, so you kind of start, like, jostling and, like, moving out, and you gently, like, grab her wrist because it's it was wrapped around you, and it's at this point you see one kind of, like, silver eye open and look at you, very confused, as you're like, <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry. I was trying to do this without waking you up it's fine <sighs> and she gets up and she's like i should figure out where our port is and where the hell we are and by the way she's in nothing <laughs> as Ooh. she walks over to her desk and she goes and you see her and she looks over a few maps and she kind of just sits in her chair and she's like if i can figure out what location we I might be able to figure out what the nearest port is. And she gets up again, and you see her kind of move back and forth as you're free to kind of do about your business. Uh, as she's pacing, <clears throat> sorry, as she's pacing, I'll walk up to her and kind of grab her on the on the shoulder very gently. Like, hey, you seem stressed out. You doing okay? Um, yes, I'm doing fine under the circumstances we need to get this um the ship fixed 
and we need to get uh, over to Valoria a lot faster than I expected. Yeah. So I'm gonna need more. <laughs> I'm gonna need more fire dust for the engine. Hey, it's um. Okay, okay, I can see you getting riled up. Uh, come here. And and I pull her over to kind of the center of the room. And okay. I'm, I'm standing there. I have her her hands in my hand, and I just look at her and I say, Hey, I haven't done this with someone before, but uh, do you want to meditate with me? And you kind of see her smile reach her eyes, and her nose wrinkles a little bit, and she goes, Sure. Be more than, I would be on it. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think, I mean, it'll just help you uh, clear your mind so you can do all the work you have to do. Uh, yes, cool. I do need help with that. Yeah, so yeah, I'm real good at that. So, um, all right, so I'm going to sit down, um, and now you will sit down also. Uh, and then and we, she follows suit. And, uh, yeah, so uh, have, have you ever done this before? Do you need a step-by-step? -step? Um, I'm not... Preferably, I, no. I mean, I I think it's sleeping while standing up, <laughs> well, or sitting up. Yeah. Okay. Well, there, yeah, now I can't say much more. It's basically sleeping while sitting up. Um, but here, let me let me try to guide you through it a little bit. Okay. So sit there. Uh, close your eyes. Softer. <laughs> there we go. And uh, I'll get you started, and then I'll I'll join in with you. So. For the first 15 seconds, just breathe in and breathe out. And now let your mind wander. Let it go wherever it needs to go. And think of your thoughts as clouds. You can look at them, see what they are, but they don't have to affect you. And I, and I continue with that sort of script as I slowly fade off into nothing. And then I start doing my own meditation. Gotcha. As you kind of do, and you you gently kind of fade out of speaking to her, you see the occasional smirk and like twitch as her mind is processing what you have guided her to. As you guys go through a very lovely guided meditation together, uh, while that is going on, we're gonna smash cut to Axe Lover Boy sitting in his chair, sleeping. <laughs> K i s l e e p i n g. K-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. <laughs> Wait. So, <coughs> Donner, you've been having a lot of thoughts running through your head within the past few hours between needing to get to Valoria, killing the Crimson King, killing the thing that is killing your people, possibly the, the fact that your brother may be dead. Lots of things going on in the old noggin. So I would say you get the um, the benefits of long rest. However, it's not a restful sleep. Like you're waking up in the middle of the night, staring at the wall, falling back asleep. Two hours later, you're back up again, staring at the ceiling. Could be the chair. It could be you uh, holding and cradling an axe or all the stuff you're going through. So um, you can either choose to sleep in as long as you'd like, or if you'd like, every well, everyone else is up. Obviously, you would have heard both Alder and Thok get up at some point. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go to uh, the bathroom and make sure Thok is up and out of the tab. And I'm going to draw uh, a bath for myself, get a little cleaner, um, and try and put my mind at ease a little bit. Uh, it's been a rough couple of days um for Donna. So and then he's going to kind of just sit and um try and talk to Helm, I think. Okay, and just see kind of where he gets. <clears throat> so you start to draw the bath. You take off your your regular casual wear and you put a uh, iron bear kind of rested against the tub. So it's within hand's reach as you slowly sink into this. It's almost piping hot and you feel all of the, the tension and the soreness in your back muscles and your arms and your legs just slowly start to burn and then dull as you let the hot water kind of take over. You take this washcloth and you make sure you wet it, wring it out, and you just put it over your face as you try to go to that meditative, happy place of 
kind of focusing in on things. <clears throat> and uh, I will have you roll a religion check to see if Heimdall is able to speak with you. Oh, ten. So you unfortunately are una unable to get to him, but you do have that feeling of he's still alive. It's a good feeling. Which is a good feeling. Especially yeah. with everything that's going on in my mind. Um, <clears throat> as he's kind of laying in the tub, um, he's going to keep playing with a little lightning in his fingers just to... Um, he was using it the other day, but just to kind of uh, practice some more. It's been a while, so he's trying to keep um, the skills sharp. Right. So, you know, you you maintain and you're trying to re-familiarize uh, yourself with this, this feature that you have. And eventually you're able to take control of the lightning. And luckily not shock yourself while being in water in a copper tub. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was a challenge. Sorry. Spectacularly. Um, so eventually, Alder, you are done cooking your food. <coughs> and uh, the plating is bad, but you've tasted all the food. And the food tastes fucking cherry. It tastes awesome. It's, it's fire. Yeah. It, it literally is. There might be cinnamon in it. I don't know. You tell me what you made. Um, just some bomb-ass oatmeal, which is not a thing. Really <laughs> anyway, so eventually, uh, are you making your way to the deck of the ship, or are you going to try to rustle everyone into a particular spot? Um, yeah, I think I'll make my way to the... Uh, uh, no, no, I think I'll try and grab everybody and just be like, hey, uh, group meeting kind of thing. Uh, and then just kind of surprise everybody with it. Um, so I'll, I'll go, obviously, get Donna and Thok and uh, work my way up to Dremel and the Captain and Val and Brooke and get everyone together. Okay. So first you kind of uh, start with Donner because the last you saw him was in the room. So you can assume he's still in the room. And Donner, as you're soaking, you hear a very light knock in the door jam as Alder, you're, you're there. Uh, hey, hey, uh, big fella. Um, it's a group meeting for morale, so hurry up. Okay. All right. Bye, bye um, God, buddy. Uh, later. Great combo. Um, so you are still in the ship, so you could either go to the captain's quarters now, or you could go to the top of the deck to greet Thok. Um, I, I figure it'd probably be on the way up to stop at the captain's quarters, correct? Yeah. So, might as well hit everyone on my way to the top. Okay. So, Dremel, as you and Creed are meditating, she has grown fairly quiet. You're, you're able to meditate for your allotted time, 10 minutes, I believe, to kind of center yourself. It's kind of towards the end where she starts rustling, and she gets a little, um restless and you kind of open one eye and then both of her eyes shoot up don't concentrate on you and she immediately gets up to the desk and she has this excited look on her face uh, as she's shuffling through maps uh do you think of something yes um i i did the the mind thing and i, I was thinking through clouds and clouds got me to uh air islands because there, there is a chain of islands that are suspended in animation in the air but that also got me to real islands and there is a port island hopefully very close to here i just have to find it and you see her and she's like ripping maps apart and you see her like going through taking out a, a compass and she has this very small kind of ornate globe that you see her kind of almost calibrating as she's sitting in her chair uh, and you see it kind of wind and spin. And she goes, just give me like 20 minutes. And I think I might be able to find where we are. Well, fantastic. I don't think I've ever seen anyone uh, get centered so quickly as you did. Well, I've had a very good teacher. Don't take that to your head because I don't think you'll be able to fit through the door. And uh, you see her and she's like kind of scri like scribbling and taking notes. Uh, 
eventually you hear a very light tapping on the the door as Alder, you're hit with uh, sensations of fresh cut lavender as you head up to the captain quarter. Uh, morning. Uh, got a surprise for you guys if you want to meet me on deck. Uh, is that a happy surprise or a, a non-happy surprise? Because that will determine my answer. Um, you like food, don't you? I do like food. A happy surprise. Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. Better be fucking and good. She looks at you and she goes, I'll, I'll meet up. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I'll walk over to her. Um, and as I walk up and she's just frantically working, I'm going to put one hand gently on her chest, one on, on her back, and just kiss mm -hmm. the top of her head. And she kind of takes your, your wrist as her eye contact isn't broken, but you feel a slight squeeze on your wrist before you leave. <clears throat> Thanks for telling me I'm amazing and the best teacher in the world and that I'm better than everybody else. I never said anything like that, but, but that's please what I continue heard. to gaslight me. <laughs> it's okay. That, I, I read between the lines. Read between these. <laughs> and she holds up three fingers. Uh, I don't know. I don't speak that language dremel go you can't tell me what to do <laughs> as he slowly just kind of <clears throat> turns around and alder you're kind of hanging out out there and eventually Tr dremel comes out he's uh he smells very strongly of that that cut lavender like he, it's almost like he was dipped in it oh as shit you, you were waiting for me <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume what happened with you last night. Let's go. Let's get a uh, breakfast for everybody. I I've been I got up early and cooked this morning. Oh no no! Why don't you tell me what you assume happened? Uh, you smell exactly like the scent that she gives off. So I'm assuming you guys were real close last night. Which, by the way, giddy up, you know. Um, good on you. But <laughs> now, when you say real close, what do you mean? I mean, like, you might have been in uh, either just cuddled or in her naughty bits. That's up to you. Um, I haven't gotten. Yeah, so what are her naughty chapter. bits? Um, her, her fun pillows. Uh, her. <laughs> Do you at this point, Alder is turning like bright pink. Um, um... <laughs> All right, you'll understand when you're older. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I've been there already. Thanks, but uh, cool. All right. I cast it's minor like illusion. I cast minor illusion into his ears and just say, sex. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. What? What did you mean? Uh, the sex. Oh, <laughs> someone's getting vulgar. Just saying <laughs> sex out in the open like that. Have some uh, class, you, man. <laughs> uh, no, that's uh, not your job. Clearly, you know, someone's already taken care of that for you. Get the hell upstairs. Let's get some food. So pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. You, are you going with Alder to get Thok? Uh, I thought Thok was up on the deck. Yeah, he's up on the deck. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm walking with Alder. Okay. So eventually you guys kind of get to, to Thok and you see that he is currently meditating and breathing in and you see he's praying as the twin sons are coming up and eventually the two of you walk up to him and it's peculiar as you kind of see that there is a very <laughs> wide shadow to the right of him. What um real quick at a game thought what what is your your name your other name? Oh, uh, Garros. 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 Okay. Uh, watching seeing the the um, long shadow, I'm gonna walk up quietly behind him and slowly quietly in his ear to say, Garros. Do I know it's trouble? Uh, you can roll an insight. I, I don't think I'd be exposed to what the voice sounds like in his head. No, definitely. So not. I'm just doing like, but you told you told us about that, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so I just uh, try to do a creepy kind of far away voice. That'll be a twenty five. Twenty five. <laughs> you do you do realize it's Tremel? <clears throat> I don't get performance. Uh, uh, you can go ahead and roll performance. All right. Try to beat a twenty five. Well, I. Uh, mathematically impossible but i got a 23 <laughs> very close you sound close. your pitch was good but your execution was off 
I'd be like, oh no, the voices are back. Really sarcastically. Oh no, they're back? Shoot. Uh, oh fuck, I, I, I kind of gave myself away, didn't I? Yeah, you got some pretty heavy feet there. Bitter patter. It's more like pitter patter. But yeah. <laughs> five, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I'll start gathering my armor and stuff and as you do and you know Dremel's going around going like stomping and going fee fi fo fum it's at this point all three of you here fuck your friends are idiots wait all of I've us told do you that before yes which fuck you would recognize this as Manu just talking to you yeah, like, and I, I talked to him back, and I was like, I've told you this before. Look, he's pretending to be a giant. Why is he stomping so hard? Hey, I, I am a giant. What if we furballed our half chi- Wait a minute, what? Are you just going to talk shit to us like that? Wait, what? What? Huh? First? Hello? Wait, can you- I mean, I, I wasn't am talking I, shit. Am I on? Can you hear me? Good. What? Yeah. Wait, <laughs> y'all, y'all can hear him. I don't know who he uh, is, but yeah, he's talking shit about me not being a giant. Yeah, okay, it sounds like he's being a little bit of an ass. Shit. And as Doc, as you watch Manu moving from the right portion of the boat towards Dremel, it's at this point, Dremel, you see uh, a figure materialize, and before long, Manu is like face to face, nose to nose to you. And he's like, I didn't, no, I wasn't being disrespectful. I was just stating a fact. Do, do I remember what he looks like? I would say you remembered bits and pieces. Yeah, I would say you remember what he looks like. Okay, I couldn't remember if he was in armor the whole time. I mean, he was our best friend in the town. <laughs> no, oh, this is right. in, his, in his modern wraps. He's wearing very um, loose-fitting clothing. He's not in the armor like you saw uh, Madu Tep before. You're getting real close for someone who... Oh, shit! M- oh, Manu? shit! And I, and I go to give him a big hug. You do, and you go right through him. Oh, shit. Holy. <laughs> Fuck, it's Ghost Manu. Oh, oh, that was weird. And when you go through him, you feel just nothing and cold at the same time. <laughs> ha. Ah. Uh-huh. Gross. Let's not do that again. Oh, yeah, please. No touching. If I wasn't confused before. I start walking through him again. Hella confused now. You don't have my consent. You don't have my consent. Oh, this feels so weird, but I like it. Uh, so it's at I this mean, point. I was like the cold. It is at this point. The four of you now start making your way down to Blefus. And uh, each time you kind of pass down a hallway, Manu just walks through the hallway, through the wall, and then out the other end. It's kind of like he's just going in one straight line as opposed to going through the halls with you. So no one's going to ask. As he's going through them, though, you occasionally hear, like, screaming and yells coming from different rooms. As he's like, oh, sorry, oh, I'm sorry. And you see him, like, sheep- sheepishly get out of different rooms. The occasional people that are walking by you are like, wasn't there the other four? They have a brown net person now. So it seems like that everyone can oh, see so him. racists? Got it. <laughs> Uh, I can swim racist. Um, so everyone is able to see him. Eventually, you guys kind of get situated. Donner, it's at this point you have Don's, I would say, probably your regular wear. Mm. Just, okay. And then are you doing anything before breakfast? Um, I, I would take my time. Okay. Uh, I'm not in a rush. You know, it's been a it's been a long couple of days for for Donna. You know, good and and bad on on both sides. So, um, you know what? Before he stops in, he's probably going to go talk to uh, Val Donna. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just kind of go to her door and see what's going on with that. So while you're taking your time and eventually you're able to dot everything, you lightly tap on Val Donna's door as you see her and she kind of gets up. And uh, she looks a little tired. Her dreads are a little out of place as they're usually wrapped up. And she looks at you with her golden eyes and she's like, oh, hey, what's um, what's going on? I just wanted to check in and see how you were feeling about, you know, life and stuff. 
how I'm feeling about life and stuff. Yeah, both of those things. The life thing is confusing at the moment. Okay. But the in stuff is good, I guess. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm hoping to get some more in stuff later. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're actually going to get uh, some breakfast right now. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to come join us or if you're busy having your hair fixed or I don't know how that and you see her and she puts kind of this elastic in her hair that just kind of keeps it in place and she's like no I can always eat and just give me like a moment and she closes the door and <clears throat> after I would say about three or four minutes she comes back out and she's wearing trousers and a shirt and she's a little bit more appropriately dressed all right let's go to breakfast then I guess uh and you have, I'm guessing you have the axe oh, yeah. strapped to your back. And she's like taking notice of it and she's like, is it heavy? Um, no. For, do you want to try and lift it? Yes. Oh, fine. <laughs> and I'll just take it off my back and, and I'm going to like stick it into a plank of the wood on the floor. And be like, here you go. Okay. Well, we'll see what she, how she does on her strength. She is a dex build, Claire. <laughs> um, okay. So she's able to unwedge it, but she's like wobbling with it, and she's like, and you I'm, see like her face I'm gonna get a little. Help. I'm gonna kind of pick it up with her, and you do, and she just has the sweat broken over her face. She's like, "Fuck, that's heavy. What is that? Like, like two hundred pounds? Uh, it's a lot. It's basically, oh. um, it was made from." It can cut anything, you know, within reason. Um, it's kind of a special metal. Yeah, it's the it's the same thing that um, the twin axes are made of, and your your hammer, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to pretty, pretty excited to try and get that back. It was a gift from my father. So, and she goes, okay, well. Let's get to port, try to figure out oh, as much information as we can. And Are then... you okay? Is this like, I just feel like you're, you you look at me and I'm different now, but I'm not. I'm still the same Donna you met before, you know, except Donna's not my real name. It's mm -hmm. Thor, but you, you can call me Donna still. Everybody else does. It's kind of like you've been with someone. Okay. For, you know, a certain length of time. And you are kind of given, um, and, and definitely not anything to put you down or anything like that, but kind of like when you're in a relationship and then you find that there are different and new aspects of a person's personality. You find out the different tics and the thoughts, and, and sometimes they're a regular, just average person and then sometimes they turn out to be an adventurer or a god or a criminal or something like that and that completely changes um i mean would it be a fair assumption if i told you before this i was married before were you though does that matter no but would that change how you kind of felt about me no Okay. And she kind of walks arm in arm with you. And she goes, I was engaged once, but no, wasn't married. Val, look, I, I understand. I'm not here to preach to you. I want you to get adjusted at your own speed. But if we live in the past, we can never move forward. So. Oh, no, no. I'm not, not living in the past. I'm not mad or anything. Just, you know, just processing. Well... I feel like you're weirder than I am about this. I feel like you're just weird all the time. So I'm just matching your weirdness. And she kind of smiles and she goes, yeah, no. She kind of punches you in the arm. Oh, I'm sorry. Holy biceps. My God. I'll just kind of shove her. And uh, she smiles as you guys make it to breakfast. And it's at this point, <laughs> Dremel, I would assume you're, you're just experimenting things that go through Manu at this point. Like you're throwing forks. You're flinging fucking food through them, and he's just sitting on the side <laughs> on uh, one of the tables in the uh, the theater room as you're just making a mess behind him. It's like that scene in Casper 
when all the uncles eat and just under it is just mush as the as you're just throwing shit at them and you're like hey did you feel that no did you feel that no <laughs> he's like your hair looks stupid did you feel that and he's like no <laughs> Not physically. And he's like, I, felt, I hurt him emotionally. As I'm doing that, um, I look toward Thok and, and Alder, and what are they doing? Or what are you guys I, doing? What are you guys doing? Well, I mean, right now, I'm, I'm just plating the food. Uh, made a nice breakfast scramble, but it looks like crap because I kind of did the thing that you're not supposed to do, which is I started cooking the meat first and then used the same pan for everything else, so everything kind of starts to look the same. Uh, but it's uh, sausage, bacon, egg scramble, and potatoes. And except for mine, it's just potatoes and fruit. But uh, I have a side of fruit for everybody else if they want that as well. Cool. And uh, Thok, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to tell Manu. I'm like, don't you miss the days where only I could see you? I miss the days when I was dead. I mean, if we're not going to talk about why this is happening, I'm going to keep experimenting. And eventually, well, I'm only going to get to one type of idea. I, I am just as baffled as you are. I'm pretty sure all of us are. He I was puts a three on his head else. and he goes, same. <clears throat> Can you drink like, water? And I, and I shove my cup at his face. And it goes right through his face. And he's like, moves his head. Can you please stop doing that? It's It makes my head fuzzy and I can't think straight. Well, maybe don't you're... make me waste water and then we won't have any issues. <laughs> You've been experimenting for 25 water. minutes. How have I been able to give you stuff to, like, hold on to, but... I don't know. I give him my water. You just put it through his head? No, I just, like, try to hand it to him. Like, I don't try to... Like, I'm not drunk. Okay, you do. And you see Manu, like, slowly his hand just goes right through the cup. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe if I pretend to be Thalk. Here, have some water. Is that better? And... Hey, the dark impression needs work. Look, I, I don't know. I haven't never tried it before. It was on the spot. Give me a break. Why does he sound like a lady? I don't sound like a lady. I just used my R's. Do you know? R's are bad. What? I said your R's are bad. <laughs> and my R's are fine. Like, the, the fuck you say? Um, Donner, it's at this point you and Val kind of go into the theater and you're kind of greeted with this very pleasant smell as you see Dremel and Thok and Alder and Manu and Alder and Thok. And, and that's when you kind of like, there was three of us, now there's four of us. And I'm pretty sure I know that guy. And things are going through him. Uh, <clears throat> guys, did something happen this morning that... Somebody wants to kind of run by me, or... Just want to let you know that when I said I had a surprise, it was breakfast, not this. Just... Look, you can put Time anything through them. <laughs> Look, you're the god. You're the one that should figure out... Why do you think that gods have all the answers? You've literally said contradictory information before this. Usually gods are supposed to have the answers. I just hit stuff really hard. That's I'm the god of... Hitting things really hard with lightning and heavy objects. Oh. And that's honest kind of like you were. I was. <clears throat> She's right. Well, we don't know. Somehow he came back. Now I'm not the only one that can see him. Things go through him. He goes through walls. But everyone can see him now. I'm going to we... take a swing at him with the axe. You just, boom, and it goes right through. And he goes the hell man i was just testing a theory you tested a theory and then if i was corporeal or alive or whatever with your weird fucking god thing and what if it like killed me and then i was like out of existence wouldn't you be happier that way no i'd be happy in the i'd be happy in the shadow fell where i'm supposed to be how do you know that wouldn't have sent you there i don't know i don't really want to find out see so i'm just testing a theory can i banish you to the shadow fell I don't know. Uh, it would not only work for a like little a bit minute, of time. Though. Yeah, it would only be for a minute. I got it. What? Guys, this is all Thok's dream. Nothing we do here matters. And I just um, take a um, cup and I, and I take a cup and I throw it on the ground. See? That's a fake cup on a fake ground. Uh, and that's a fake this... mad waitress at me for having to fake clean it up. 
<laughs> and uh, it's at this point, Creed just kind of comes in and you see her and she's all dressed and Brock is behind her. She has these tubes of maps and she watches and you're like, yeah. And hey, <laughs> the moment she walks in, I'm like, yep, no, nope, definitely not a dream. I mean, for Thok, this would be a nightmare. So, mm. and Manu's like, it feels like a fucking nightmare. <laughs> hey, we can all hear you now. Peter yeah, Valerie. I know. I hope I'm glad you can. And Creed is looking very suspiciously at Manu. And Creed, she's ghost just, Manu, ghost Manu Creed. She goes, he's a ghost. That's the one I was telling you about yesterday before we went to meet with the council and all that jazz. She kind of looks at Manu, then looks at you and just goes, okay, cool. We're weird. I don't <sighs> know. It gets worse every day. I've, I've noticed. Just, so, um, I mean, I met his body. I might as well meet the rest of him, no? Yeah, we've met his <laughs> old body as well. It was a good time. So, Creed kind of moves your, your stuff out of the way. And she goes, so, I know where we are. And I think I can get us some supplies that can possibly get us to Valoria. I'm going to try to get there in three weeks. We're going to need some more uh, fuel for my engine. Okay. And so, cool. she unrolls the, the map. And if Roll20 would like to cooperate, the wonderful tool that is Roll20. Woo-hoo! So. Water. Sh- water. water. Not this one yet. Water, <laughs> hell in water. That's the actual map city. So that's fine. You can see that. So she goes, so this is the, um, the island port of Bristow. So, or I'm sorry, Bristow. It's very, very small. It's like a small, almost like a city. So it's fairly large, larger than a town, but smaller than a metropolis. And it is completely covering this island. They're usually made in different kind of exports. And they're kind of hard to find unless you know where to look. And I know where to look. I've been there a few times, um, done some business. But all in all, it is a very large place that I think we should be able to get our information from. Information. Well, supplies. I assume you guys have ghost questions now. Not really. This, um, this doesn't really concern me all that much. Great. Just kind of letting it ride. Are you sure that this island is real? Because I'm pretty sure we're in Thok's dream. And Thok would really want us to find an island because that's mostly water. And that's what he knows. Can you please convince him that he's not in my dream? And she kind of... <laughs> She kind of looks at Dremel and then looks at Doc. Uh, give me one sec. Dremel does a 23 hit. Hit? Uh, yeah. Okay. You feel this kind of white, hot flash of pain as Creed slaps you across the face. And there's a slight smite to it, but she didn't punch you. <laughs> Oh, this is a painful dream. Maybe you're right. Maybe this is a dream. (laughs) And Manu just very quietly goes, do it again. (laughs) So she unravels the map and she goes, so we are somewhere in this area. Hold on. I have to move your cameras. We are somewhere in this area uh, towards the bottom here. So come on, is that this one? Okay, I see it. Yes. Little dot. So we are somewhere around this area. We want to get to this big green block. Okay. So I know we're on a time crunch. I have a little bit of the the fire dust left. I think I can get us there in about a day, but everyone would need to be inside. And if anyone's on the top deck of the ship, they are going to fly off. Will will it help if we control water or aid in any way, shape, or form before or after you use the rest of your, what is it, fire engine? It's it's fire dust. It, it fire. fuels the, uh, the engine that's in the ship. Um, possibly. But it, it would still need to be, it, it goes fairly fast, if not faster than a regular boat but luckily we're going there for repairs anyway and 
I might need to cash in a few favors there as well just to get the boat fixed. But we can get there long before we're supposed to get there because we're projected right now to get there in at least a week if we're going at our, turn, at our current velocity. That gives us two weeks left. To get to Valoria. And Valoria from there is about three weeks. So kind of out of curiosity, someone who's not super well versed in uh, boat travel. Yeah. Uh, how much of this fire dust can you get and how much time could it cut off between getting us from there to Valoria? Well, I have enough to at least probably get us there and then some at least to Flamingo Bay or at least on the outskirts, at least a day out or two from Flamingo Bay. However, um, the issue is it's very hard to find fire dust outside of the desert. And unfortunately, the man who built this engine didn't give me another source of power. Huh. I look at Manu, and I'm like, hey, you're from the deserts, right? That's very presumptuous, but yes. Don't be presumptuous. I've read your diaries. Um, Nerd. Got a so, door. shut up. Do you know of the substance, like, this fire I, dust? It's Have you extremely heard? flammable, and it's quite explosive. It, quite frankly, I think it's incredibly dangerous that there's an engine in the middle of the ship, and you just keep it on oh hand. Oh my god, Manu. You just need... Can we... Do you know of it or not? Can, do you know where we can get some? Yeah. Um, um, great. Use those words. If... I was wondering if you know of anything that is similar to it. Like, if it's not so much fire dust, like, well, gunpowder or black powder or any of that, like, cannon powder, would, would that work? Would that suffice and substitute instead of using like 93 grade gas like you can get an 87 like the dust is made out of quartz it's um the sands in the desert are made out of these larger granules of this red coarse quartz and the fire dust is a kind of flammable version of that if you can find some other kind of crystalline substance that you could perhaps get down into a fine powder and give it the properties of uh, similar to the fuel, if not the same, you should probably have it. But that will take time. That will take time. That we do not have. And I did roll for him, and he goes, however, and he looks over at Donna, you have a giant battery. Is there any way we you, we might be able to figure out how to, to run the ship off of electricity when we get to the port? I'm, that's me. I'm the battery. I mean, you're the lightning guy, right? I mean, I, I guess I can be. That's what's required. I mean, I'm no no god of lightning and hitting stuff, but I can do some lightning things too. I can't hold. You've it. seen it. Maybe maybe we can find an alternate fuel source. If anything, give us a boost, right? Exactly. I, mean, I know I can control the winds while I'm on the ship. So that could definitely speed. have the wind in, in our favor. And I'll turn to look at Creed. Is, do you think there's a way we could get this engine and, and put in um, a conductor? You know, kind of like a, a, a metal rod that goes up. I can call some lightning. I can sit below deck if, it, if it's required and I could just channel lightning all day. But... If we're looking for a big kick, it would be better if I could have a source. To jump, yeah. Let me work on it, and let me see what I can do about it. But we should be able to get there at least in a day's time, regardless. As long as we stay on deck. Well, I'm using... Uh, well, I'm going to be using that dust because I need to get my boat fixed, and I don't know how much longer, especially with wind and water, I don't know how much we're going to get waterlogged. The quicker right. I can get to the port, the quicker I can fix my ship. So let's get to the port. All right. I will make my way to the the part of the ship where it's gaining the most water. 
and to assist, I'm just gonna keep ca <coughs> casting destroy water. Um, with create and destroy water okay. as many times as I can without overexerting myself. Um, I'm gonna sit before, uh, before she puts the powder in. Mm -hmm. I know that it's gonna be not a whole lot of help but I'm going to uh, move the winds to go in our favor to try and like give us a little bit of a boost while okay. we start. And uh, I'm going to follow Thalk and try to find um, other holes that he's not destroying the water and just cast, um, what's my ass spell? Frostbite on any of the holes, trying to plug them up with just frozen water. Okay. And um, I'll be doing the same, uh, looking for other small holes, only I'll be casting Mending. Okay. And while you guys kind of do this, Manu is just kind of sitting and putting his head to the back of the wall as he's watching you guys. I mean, now that we can see you, can you help us? Sure. He gets up, and you see his hand just go right through the wood. Perfect. It's much easier to work when we have some sort of entertainment. <laughs> Puts the hand through. <sighs> Look, everyone's got a roll. That's good. All right, good talk. Frostbite. What's my roll? What would be my roll? Yeah. Frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> entertainment, I just told you. And I'm just going to like lean over to Dremel and be like, you realize that he's going to haunt you in your sleep now, right? Uh, a forever friend? Oh, darn. You say that now. At least he's not a bird. <laughs> oh, so he's I... afraid of birds. I'm not afraid. Yeah. I just don't like yeah, them. And no their beaks are scary. I mean, he annoying. Birds. I so, look yeah. at Manu at one point, and I just think it in my head, but I try to see if this still works, and I'm just like, I'm so sorry. And he does make eye contact with you, and you just hear a very long sigh in your head. And I'll just keep destroying water. Okay. As you guys kind of do that, and you fix yourselves uh, accordingly, uh, <clears throat> you manipulating the winds, Creed puts the last of the fire dust into the engine, and it grows even hotter than it was before as she literally has to go out of her uh, out of that little cubby room and almost to the front door of her office without getting scalded of some kind. As you kind of all feel the inertia just jerk and then just kind of zoom forward, almost like you're on a bullet train. If she told us like that the fire was in effect, I would let her borrow my ring of fire protection okay um, which requires attunement but it takes what an hour to attune yep so if that's the sake of argument then she would wait the uh the hour and then she would stay down there but she would have like kind of like welder goggles on just to make sure that she's able to see and not get blinded by the almost pure energy that is combusting into this engine as what you guys are doing was helpful, but you see fucking pieces of the ship flying off. You see the, the effort that you guys put. Paint starting to peel back. Donna, are you staying on the deck of the ship? Oh, no. As soon as I hear that, that, that roar and we start to get in a forward motion, I would uh, run below deck. Okay. So I would say uh, it's going to be a few hours, probably like four to five. So if there's anything you particularly want to do or discuss while you get into town... What you're looking for will be uh, will eventually get to that. So, I'm giving you guys this opportunity to go over what you guys want. Uh, well, I don't know, Dremel. What do you want to do when we get to town? Same goes for you, Thok and um, Ghost Manu, or is just Manu preferred? Please, just Manu. Okay, all right, Ghost Manu. I mean Manu. Sorry, it's new. Um, I mean, this is going to take some time. So I, I'm going to look around town real quick to see if I can find someone to chant my armor. <clears throat> Fair enough. 
are you is that would that be a thing that could happen in one day i mean i'm just gonna see how much it would be and how long it would take if it i don't know how long we're gonna be here maybe it could take a couple days i just don't i don't i don't know maybe i just don't think we're gonna have that much time in the in the city um but i could be wrong we just don't have a lot of time to waste no i got to but there's what oh it doesn't hurt to ask you know i totally get it i mean as yeah, long I mean, as you're we waiting find on your fire dust we'll be okay right i mean it's gonna take three weeks without it so with the fire dust it's gonna be like i don't know two yeah, but if there's not any fire dust is what i'm concerned about and maybe we well, can find we someone to make something like it. I mean, we still have to get the boat repaired too. So, because if we don't get the boat repaired, it doesn't matter if it takes three weeks to get there. We're not going to make it there. Hey, fuck! What about your boat? Well, my boat right now it's uh, probably at Green Coast. I should probably send them a message and ask. Yeah. Give me a, give me a second. And I walk out of the room. Okay. So, <clears throat> what you doing, Doc? <clears throat> I'm going to first send a message to Sue. Let me get my mean pants on. Oh, your pants are so mean. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, bro. I'm going to say, so... Funny story. Almost died. Okay now. Heading to Valoria. Hopefully we'll be there in three weeks. Also, where are you? Are you in Greenest? Moment passes and you hear Sue go, well, glad you didn't die. Now I can kill you. We are two days out from arriving at Green Coast. We were at Valoria. Okay. Uh... Have I, before I send this to her, have I heard of Bisto? No. Okay. Um, then I'll say, well, we'll either run into each other or meet up at Valoria. You're way closer than we are. So might as well turn around and head back. And, and there's a moment that passes and you hear, no, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. I traveled for almost two months going back and forth to get you. I'm taking shore leave. For a few. Okay. <laughs> I'll send another message. And by a few, you mean a couple days. That will be enough. Head to Valoria. If you wish to kill me, do it in person. Stop being a bitch. Well, I meant a few days, but once I get to port, maybe I should look at my own ships. I mean, I have the title here. Lord, it's going to go back and forth. Um, I hope. 
for God's sakes, are we going to do this again? Fine. Take the time you need. I'll meet you at Valoria when you get there. Also, how's Tibrin? And she responds with, of course I'm going to Valoria. I need to restock. And she goes, he's adjusting a lot better than he was a few months ago when you first left. He's working through his anger. I message her back. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call him. So be prepared to either hear screams cries or something being broken and you just kind of get a uh, <clears throat> a response back well he isn't drunk so you should be okay <clears throat> and then I send a message to Tibrin okay and what do you say to Tibrin <clears throat> Hey, it's me. Sorry for the distance. It's been a rough few months. I miss you. I know it's been hard, but we'll meet soon. I think it's 25. Okay. There's a moment or so that passes and you're kind of in that baited breath feeling and eventually you get back. Yeah, no, it's been long. Why didn't you reach out through the six months, eight months, nine now? Sue got a call. I can explain more in person, but I didn't want you to see me in the state I was in. I lost my way, but regaining it back again. And you got a reply back of, you would be honest with me, I know that. I didn't do anything wrong, did I? <sighs> to make you mad or upset with me? I know I can be brash, but you're not mad, right? This is the last one I can send, God damn it! Okay, um, I use my last spell slot that high and say not at all you are one of the few things that have kept me together throughout the last nine months if it wasn't for you I'd either be dead or shattered okay and you get a reply back. <clears throat> okay. I'll see you soon. Sue seems to be heading towards your port, but she looks annoyed. So I'm guessing we're not going there. And there's a moment that passes. I love you. Fuck. And you hear that hesitance as he, as I would assume this is the first time he said that. Because I feel like Tiburon is not a very emotional person. 
So, yes, that is the last, what he says with his last five words. And I can't reply. Cool. Correct. Um, <laughs> gotta grab those heartstrings, <laughs> bitch. I give myself a second, kind of take a deep breath, just start wiping my eyes dry to make sure that nobody knows I was crying. And then I and walk back to the rest of the group. Also, it's while you do this that you've noticed when you kind of exiled yourself away from the group, Mono wasn't there. He didn't follow you or teleport next to you. You're on the other side of the ship to your room, I'm assuming. Yeah. I, I and by the time you kind of get back, he's still in the same spot talking to Dremel. And it looks like, like none of that has occurred to his mind that you left and he didn't. Where'd you go? I go to Manu. What? I, I didn't... I was here, but you were here, right? No. I was in the room. What? Like, your room? Like, all the way on the other side of the ship? Wait, were you crying? No, I wasn't crying. You were crying. Shut up. Oh, hey, Thok Thaw was crying. Anyways. You are right, Thok? Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. No, because I can't hug him. You guys should hug him for me. Come here, Thok. Don't. Job. Like, in my head, I look at Manuel and I'm like, if I find a way to kill you again, I'm going I, to take it. I will welcome it with open arms, Thok. And you feel a really warm <laughs> embrace from me and Dremel. <laughs> I'm not going to like you. didn't want it, so. It's not a consensual hug. Cuddle, puddle, cuddle, puddle. So, uh, uh, as Doc kind of does that and he comes back, do you debrief them on what you spoke with uh, Sue about? Yeah, I tell them that uh, uh, the ship is heading to Green Coast. It's a couple days away. Um, they have to restock and resupply. They actually just left Valoria and headed there, so they're going to be turning around and heading back. Um, so, depending on Creed's maps and all that stuff they'll actually be in valoria before we arrive there hopefully if they, nothing stalls them well um yeah that that's great thok it's uh great that you're gonna get reunited with uh we, we know about Turbert tiburon mm -hmm. right it's it's great that you're gonna be reunited with the uh the one you love um I'll, I'll I'll be back, and and Dremel kind of just turns around and walks away. Okay. Could I tell us something was bothering him? I would say so. I, I mean, he wasn't really little... hiding it, so I'd assume all of you could say that, unless you're oblivious to the inflection in his voice. I'm gonna go after Drem. Okay. So Drem, as you trucking on out, you hear. Uh, some gentle like steps behind you and you turn around and Donner's kind of there hands in his belt as he kind of catches up to you. What's going on, Drim? Uh, walk with me. And I, and I turn around and I start walking. I make a beeline for uh, the nearest bar that I know of. Okay. You would know it's in the theater, and you know that, like I said to, to Alder earlier, you guys kind of have free reign of the ship within reason. So you're able to kind of serve yourself, or anything that you drink is not going to be uh, coined, or you don't have to pay for anything. Um, so yeah, you would know that the nearest uh, bar is in the theater, or if you prefer, there's the one on the upper deck, but I would say don't go to that one. You want to go to the upper deck? You just want to go... Ah! <laughs> Whoa. Wind in our hair, you know. Just be skin just peeling off our faces. <laughs> Sounds exotic. Skin it. is skin, man. What? I'll, I'll go to the um, the theater bar, and this whole walk, I'm not saying anything. I'm just uh, just walking. Okay. I can sense that he's walking next to me or behind me, or and I, I know he's following. But I immediately go to the um, the bar, grab the first bottle that I see. I don't don't really care what it is i describe something okay. and i go over to the uh the stage 
mm-hmm. and take a, a giant, like two full gulps just of, of whatever the drink is, mm-hmm. lay it down on the, uh, on the stage, hop up. So I'm sitting on it, rotate around and just lay there in like a star. Okay. And uh, as the liquid in the bottle, it's this kind of amber viscous liquid, uh, almost uh, syrupy, but it's um, glass cleaner. It's mm. not glass cleaner. <laughs> it's it has like hints of um, kind of honey and elderflower in it. As you're drinking this very interesting, I would say like a, a molassesy kind of whiskey. You want some? Sure. I'm not one to let someone drink alone. I'll take a swig. And you're greeted by this kind of sweet, uh, thicker kind of beverage. It's not refreshing, but most alcohols aren't like mm. that. That is um, probably the strangest thing I've ever had the pleasure of drinking voluntarily yeah it's uh it's bad it's not it's it's not good it's very bad but it's getting the job done it's uh yeah what's going on drim dremel takes a a deep breath as the tears start to to well up I'm never going to see him again. And, uh, <laughs> Thok will. And I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy for him. Uh, but all I can think of is that everyone that I've ever known up until Stoneboard is, uh, is gone. And I'll, and I grab the drink and take a big swig and I'll never see him again. I can I can fake it, but it's it's never the same. It just makes Grim, it you, harder. What are you and and Donna's going to kind of sit next to him as he's start out. What do you believe happens after after death? I don't know. Would you like me to tell you what my people believe? <laughs> Uh, sure. There, there's this place, it's called Valhalla, and after you die, especially in battle, you are taken to Valhalla, and this place, you're escorted by a finest warriors the valkyrie all very wonderful amazing deadly scary ladies all of them they take you to the halls of valhalla where all you do is eat drink fuck and fight That's um. That's nice and all, but my my people didn't die in a fight. They died in an ambush, in a slaughter. My mother died in a slaughter, and I didn't get to say goodbye. <laughs> I didn't even know. I don't even know if she died at first. You'll see her again, Dream. I promise. I'll make sure you get that word. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh... I think I'm just going to lay here for a little as I, I grab the bottle again and, and take a big swig. 
I can kind of relate. Unfortunately, I uh, Donna looks back down and he's trying to find the right words. I did get to say goodbye to Sif and Modi. Uh, but with everything I've learned in the last few days, um, they're, they're gone and they've been gone for quite some time. And last I heard, your man in crimson has a spear that belongs to my father that was last held by my son. He was he was king. So to say that I know what you're going through is not accurate but know that I can relate know that I'm sorry and know that if you need to confide in anyone you can confide in me I, I know I know you're just trying to relate but we did not grow up the same we did not grow up the same and um oh okay uh, uh, I think right now I appreciate what you're trying to do but I just need to be by myself please and Donna will shrug and he'll hop up and walk out. And once once I know that he's out of the the theater, mm -hmm. I cast minor illusion to make a an, a small model scale image of of not my hut, but the hut of my best friend. Okay. And uh, and I, I look at that picture and, and I start creating me and my family and him and his family just living around. And uh, I go face by face looking at everyone until I get to my mother. And then everything fades away and it's just her. That's just what I remember of her. And I, and I sit there looking at it as tears just uh, trickle down okay. until I don't have enough energy and realistically the alcohol kicks in and it just pff, fades away. Okay. Eventually, Donna, you find yourself back with the <clears throat> rest of the party. Val eventually meets the four of you down there, four including Manu, um, and states, we're, uh, we're a few hours out. Um, this is going to be a little pukey. You might want to hold on to something because we're going to stop going at this momentum. Pukey. I mean, I, possibly your stomach could hit, you know, the... It could hit something in your body. Remember the first time I had us wind walk? And mm. we stopped? It's probably going to feel something like that. So just um, brace yourselves. Uh, it's not, of course, happening yet. I'll come down and let you know. But just wanted to give you a uh, an idea. Where's Drum? Uh, he's off meditating. Just trying to find him, his center and all that good stuff. And she goes, okay. Um, so, 
figure out what you want, lads. Uh, all right, got my list. And you see her, and she kind of salutes off as she goes back to her, her quarters. Is there anything else we would like to do while we're on the ship before getting to the port? Now is your chance. Grumble's just going to keep self-isolating. Okay. Donna's going to arm wrestle Brock. All right. And uh, I'm going to talk to Thok about uh, his game plan for getting into the city to go to like a marketplace. So that way we could either look around at stuff and help him find an enchanter, maybe help me find a store. Um, just to kind of like shop around and look at stuff. Okay. Uh, as you guys are kind of discussing, if you guys want to discuss privately in like Facebook chat, you may. Um, while we do that, uh, go ahead and roll a strength save, Donner. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, that's bad. Uh, an 11. Modded 20. Perfect. So you kind of square up and he's able to push down and hit the back of your hand on the uh, on the wood. Oh, I love it. Let's go again. And okay. Ah, I'm rolling real bad. Uh, 13. He also got a 13. So you two are standing there kind of arm veins popping. Uh, modded 20. He, uh, what is it? Not critted. He did the opposite of that. He botched. So <laughs> his arm immediately goes down. Now we have to do best two out of three, right? So yeah, only... I think we do. That's fair. And he puts his arm back up. Uh, 16. And you see him and he starts pushing it down. He got an 18. Uh, but I'll say with your 16, you're able to stay at that leaning position. I'm in that weird, yeah, in between one place. Oh, no. Uh, an 11. An 11. And he got a 15. So he lightly taps the back of your hand to the wood before you both let go and you start rubbing your biceps and forearms. It was impressive. I've not lost twice in the same. That was... Thank you. Credit to you, sir. You know, I, uh, I drink a lot of juice. Oh, is that the secret? I wouldn't say it's the secret, but it's definitely lovely. Oh, okay. I'll, I've got to, I've got to put some more ju- juice in in my diet. Oh, you should. It's a treat. It's a good time. <laughs> and then I just spend the rest of the time talking about juice with Brock. Okay, and you do, and you see that Brock holds himself, so he's he's a lot smarter than he looks and lets on. Occasionally, he'll use very flourishy, lavish kind of words, like unknowingly, like kind of just dropping them, like saying how his master was incredibly lascivious and would try to literally sleep with anything that moved. And you're like, lasciviva? Oh, yeah. No, I don't know all about lasciviva. <laughs> yeah. I um, Sorry, I, I used to read a lot. I was uh, I was going to be a scholar. You were going to be a scholar, and it seems like a waste of some good, awesome arm wrestling talent. Well, followed Lady Soon, and I was an acolyte. I was going to live my life in the church, and that was going to be my purpose. And then I was assigned to the Jessica's father. Very brash tiefling incredibly disgusting sexually. I mean, he used to say he was built for comfort. Oh, that's a phrase that I hope to never hear again. Quite often. And I will give you this. I was a very young child. I was 12. Oh, he was just trying to start you out a, a little early. Well, no, definitely not. But he did make me once lug a piano up three floors so I could put it outside of the bedroom he was canoodling in and playing a song for him. I mean, that's just dedication. I, I, I respect it. He was my knight. And now you're here. I made a promise. What was that promise? And he looks over at Jessica and Val and he goes, to protect those two girls with my life. How's that going so far? They're still alive. I mean, it doesn't seem like much of a life, though. 
And he kind of smiles and he goes, I've seen the world. I've seen a lot of things. Made deals. Broken deals. Fought, scrapped. I'm just kind of tired. Aren't we all? And you see any kind of smirks and he goes, besides those two keep me young and keep me occupied. Are you kidding me? I should have been in the city with that one, but I was busy worrying about this one. I mean, well, I, I promise not to allow Valdana to fall under my watch, so you don't have to worry about that. I know uh, Val and I have spoken, and I know about your son. And I'm certain that when he was with you, when despite maybe being in the, the care of a uh, aunt, uncle, guardian, you would still be inclined to, no matter how hard they fought, you always felt like you would fight a little bit harder, yeah? Oh, yeah, of course. So I feel about them. I get it. I get it. You know, Brock, we haven't gotten to speak a whole lot while I've been on this ship, but I feel like I've gotten to learn a lot about you in this time, and I really appreciate your your way of looking at things. I'd like to think I have a interesting outlook on life. Well, cheers to that, and I'll reach over and see if I can grab a bottle or something and take a swig and give him the bottle. And he takes a swig, and there's like an empty bottle at the end of one of the bars, and he goes, do you want to see something cool? Uh, always. I haven't done this in a very long time, so if I miss, you can't laugh at me. I won't do it. You beat and me you see him, And he twice. stands up, and he starts flicking his arm like he's limbering his wrist. And almost like he's throwing a fastball. You see this arcane energy envelop in his arm, and he lets go as he eldritch blasts the uh, the bottle on the end of the the bar. Ah. I don't. I don't know that one. That is when you make a deal with something, and uh, you promise to uh, fulfill some of your obligations to that. I mean. You could make a promise to me. I could be a warlock of you. I mean, yeah. I don't know if the uh, the other guy would be too keen on that. They're often not, but I figured I'd give it a shot. Definitely always give it a shot. You're the nicest god I know, though. Uh, it's... I don't know. We're just extenuating circumstances, I guess. Um, not not really a god right now. Um, not that that would change my outlook much. No. I just... I like to be with my people, not above my people. And he kind of nods and he goes, kind of like a working class hero. Something like that. Not wrong with that. Well, like I said, Brooke, I've, I've appreciated getting to know you a little better. And if you're ever looking to um, get out of a deal with something a little more sinister and into a deal with something a little more of the people, um, let me know. And he kind of nods. He's like, I'll take you up on that. Um, most likely when you're back at higher status, if you will, then we can worry about the Kraken. We'll, uh, we can... We can work out our uh, own deal, and I'll make sure to null and void the prior one. Okay. Well, and he, he looks back at, at Val, and who's I, I would assume is most likely either talking to Alder or to Thok, and he just smiles. He's like, as long as she's safe, uh, as long as yeah. they're safe. And I'll stick, uh, Donna's going to stick his hand out to shake. He takes it, and it's like a fucking catcher's mitt. I'll be like, good. Looks like we do have a deal anyway. So uh, an early deal, you know, a pre a pre deal. Pre deal. Would. Okay. Yeah. And uh, 
you spend the rest of your your time kind of just bullshitting. He tells you more stories about when he was a kid and what he was doing. I would tell him God's layer stories, anything yeah, I, I could remember. Which he is incredibly enticed by. Um, and then Thok, Alter, you guys doing anything within your time? Um, I would at some point go to Creed if she knows. Because uh, I'm assuming she's been to Barto. So. Uh, yes. Okay. And Bisto. 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 Sorry. Uh, that's why I wrote it down because I knew I was going to forget um, and ask her if she knows of any shops that deal with magical items that can potentially enchant because I don't want to like waste too much time there if I can't you know I just you know what I mean yeah so she kind of informs you and she's like there's several markets um, I mean it's been a few years since I've been there but I know that they have uh, different kind of alchemists and enchanters uh, I would try something along the lines of the Crystal Bell Village of the market about it's it should be the first market when we get into port, quite honestly. Usually the farther end market, that's gonna be more of your uh <clears throat> weaponry, armory, uh I would say magical items, and meanwhile the the initial market is kind of your potions, your spell scrolls, your uh enchanters your alchemists so it's kind of uh separated and organized so that way it's a little less confusing for travelers uh most likely we'll be coming in from the um coming in from the side of where that alchemist market faces so most likely you'll be able to at least get an answer there okay good to know um i'm just trying to think of some things to prepare ourselves to fight this uh man in crimson and I think uh, I'm looking for an enchantment for the armor. But thinking about it, I don't know if your ship will be ready by the time that the enchantment is put on the armor. But it never hurts to check, right? Like, I guess. Definitely never hurts to check. I mean, you could always just buy new armor at that other market and then just have them enchanted to you. For you. And then just pick it up on the way back from somewhere, I guess. Yeah, if we don't die. True. You're not wrong. All right. Not do you need sure. me to do anything around the ship? Any help? Uh, just stay inside the ship as she is just calculating, and you see her just very, like, almost precision like she's just moving the wheel ever so slightly within the engine room, almost like she's able to drive without seeing. Weird. All right. Stay inside us. Uh, let me know if anything. I know. Will do Thok. Head out. Okay. Alder. Uh, honestly, at this point, I'm just kind of sitting, uh, probably talking with Val, uh, just kind of nothing, uh, asking if she's ever been to Bisto and, you know, if she has, um, you know, what what we could look for in that, in that city. So. Okay. So. <clears throat> eventually a few hours pass. And, oh, my server is being interrupted, but that's okay. Um, and eventually you are able to get to this kind of massive island. Um, there's a smaller island chain that is kind of off the coast, but there is this, it almost looks like someone took a, uh, a city and just dropped it in the middle of the ocean. There seems to be different buildings and of <clears throat> different colors, bright colors, this seems to be more of a tropical climate since it is in the uh, the ocean, more towards the equator of the area or more southern of the area. And eventually, the uh, Wandering Rose makes its way to Bisto. Uh, <clears throat> eventually, Creed is able to drop anchor. When she slows down the boat, there is a very hard lurching, but being used to wind walking, luckily none of you throw up. Eventually, Creed kind of comes out, and uh, she goes, well, uh, appreciate the patience, everyone. Uh, we are officially in Bisto. I'm going to see what the damage is and assess that. Uh, I will say, let us all meet back here at about, and she kind of looks at this little pocket watch that she has, which all of you are like, the fuck is that she's looking at? And she goes, we'll meet back here in about three, four hours, get your shopping done, and I'll assess the damage. We may have to stay here for a night or so, uh, depending on how bad that is. I don't even have to worry, want to worry about the headache right now. But uh, 
Enjoy yourselves, blow off steam, and if you're left on the island, uh, you might want to find another way home. As Fair enough. To, yeah, as she goes off to kind of address her business as she goes back into her, her room. So, we're heading out into the... Um, <clears throat> The city. So there are um, city docks. There are uh, houses that are kind of on risers. So when tide comes in, it doesn't and completely flood out. However, the island is fairly tall. Uh, the beaches are this kind of almost white powdery sand. And eventually you see that. Alder, you would find this particularly interesting. As you see that most of the people that are here are either of elven kind or they are of triton kind which you know to be some offshoot of an elf in the water okay curious very curious and i would say the the rest of you would notice this as well but i think it would be particularly interesting to to alder Are we all walking out at the same time together? Yep. We're all walking out. So I will say with that, let's wrap it here because I know that we're a little pressed for time. And then next episode, we'll be able to explore the city of Bisto. The uh, the last thing I want to do before we leave is uh, as we're all walking and, and Alder's talking about the people who are there, uh, Dremel notices that his bottle's pretty much done. Uh, so he just, he's like, I, I'm going to go find a bar. And just walks away. Okay. And with that, we will end tonight's session. Guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Dungeons and Dragons and Junk Drawer. We'll be back next week with an all new episode. Uh, it just takes us a week to write them, sometimes two. So, you know, that's just how it works. Right Josh Delgado, would you like to read some names in the chat? You know, normally I would, but I think. I have a surprise instead. Be right back. What? If he comes out naked, I'm gonna I was going to say, so if he, he needs to come out naked. I'm going to be the happiest gay man. <laughs> Me right, too. This is mostly a surprise for Mike and Justin, but it's really Carlos and Pat's fault for not going to high school with me. So, welcome. Chris Molina. Uh, what's up? Oh, Chris what? fucking from what? <laughs> Hi, Chris. Dude, what the hell, space. man? There you go. Oh, thanks. Hear him. <laughs> what up, boys? <laughs> Hey, Fuck, man. are you living there now? No, I'm just on a road, on a, like a really big road trip right now. So, yeah. hell yeah, oh. dude. <laughs> so, uh, I brought I brought Chris up here to do my normal job of reading the users in chat. So, if you can give a big old thank you to all these people and then these three people up here. All right. So, give a shout out to Commander Root, Condominium. Crunch Chip Chip, Feet, Gandalf the Babe, Ginger, Ginger Yeovil, is that Ildera, Ildera, Lurks, Run D, Run DC, Talking Grobble, uh, and then just these two. Was it Mike from Florida? Uh, Mike from Florida and Nikki Hurray. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Hey. Guys, thank you so much. We'll see, see you, you next week. <laughs> cool. Bye. All right. There we go. <laughs> no one's going to care about that. <laughs> no, I just did it for, for you two. It was a <laughs> if you guys had gone to high school with us, I would have also done it for you two. Right, yeah, fair there. enough. It's okay. But that's everyone. Sorry, I went to New Jersey. <laughs> was We're sorry weird. that you went. But I mean, dude, granted, we had to go to the Florida education system, so like we're not really better he's off. He's definitely smarter than us. <laughs> Is he, though? Is no, he? Josh has a freak brain. <laughs> You're a freak. My brain's broken. Yeah. yeah, but Josh is the outlier. He's he's not the rule. He's the exception. <laughs> no, we also had another friend who is, this, I, I, you know, my, our friend Nick, I think, is the smartest person I've ever met. Yeah. So. But Nick's got a butt, though. And I'm pretty sure that's where he keys all his brains.
Yeah. Yeah. Brain. He does have. He's got them blood boys. <laughs> Double cheeked up on a Thursday. Every time I see him, I'm like, it's not even my birthday. All this cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I think we should name this episode. Uh, what was it? Working class hero. I like, I like that. We name. should uh, we should wrap and actually say goodbye first, though. Oh, we, I didn't know that. Totally I thought we were that. gone. Oh no, we done. No, I wanted yeah, that on stream. Oh god, I just said double cheeked up about Nick <laughs> Gunther. Nick Gunther, your butt slamming. Please clip we this, Mike, so I can send it to him. Yeah, we did. Nick's got a butt dough. Nick Gunther talking about dance. <laughs> Nick Gunther. <laughs> Uh, oh, that, oh, we're already off. All right, we're not okay. the gay guys either. Right. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. So long. Farewell.